Hello, my name is Miss Silward. I am the Head of Social Science here at Waldgrave School. Um, I'm absolutely delighted that you have chosen to express some interest in our psychology course here. And the purpose of this is just to give you some more information so that you are able to make an informed decision about whether or not this is the right course for you. And I hope that you um, decide to join us and we'll see you in September if you do. So if we were delivering this session um, in real, real life, I would be asking you to think of what psychology means to you. So at any point during this presentation, you can um, stop the video and just have a moment to think and reflect. You can go backwards if you wish to go over something again. So I'd just like you to think about what psychology actually means to you and try and think of five words um, that can sum it up. So psychology then is a scientific discipline and has links with the natural sciences in some ways. Um, it's a thriving academic discipline and it's a vital professional practice. Um, so you may go on to have a career in psychology and you may go on to do a degree that's accredited by the British Psychological Society. That will enable you to work in many, many um, different aspects of psychology, some of which we'll, um, we'll discuss later on in this presentation. Um, psychologists then gain and collect evidence to develop theories and explanations for human behaviour. They do look at animal behavior as well, but we're trying to understand human behavior. And the way they do this is to conduct rigorous scientific research to analyze data that will verify an hypothesis. So this is the principle of a principle of science that a hypothesis can be created and, and proven or disproven. Um, uh, there are many, many different explanations for human behavior. And as such, it's a very broad, broad subject. So we study the AQA exam specification here at Waldgrave. And part of it, one of the units is the memory unit. So we're going to have a little go at doing a bit of an experiment here. So in 2011, Simon and Shambury conducted a survey on the beliefs people held into the properties of memory. So within their responses, they found that 63% believe that memory works like a camera, a video camera. 55% um, of people believed that memory can be enhanced through hypnosis. 48% believe that memory is permanent. And they also believe that the testimony, or 37% believe that the testimony of a single confident eyewitness should be enough to convict a criminal defendant. And this is where these um, topic areas have real life application. So you could go on to look at eyewitness testimony in courts um, when convicting criminals. So that's where you can have this kind of real world application of psychology. So what we're going to do is try and test whether memory is permanent. So on the following slide, there are some images. You should try to remember as many as you can um, and no cheating. So here are the objects. Okay, so you don't have to have 30 seconds, but if you can give yourself 30 seconds, there's no timer, you can pause it whenever you wish. Okay, so hopefully you paused. Just try and write down as many items that you can remember. So we are trying to think then, is memory something that's permanent? And the way that we would analyze this is looking at the cognitive area. So memory is part of the cognitive area. And look at the multi-store model of memory by Atkinson and Schifrin in 1968. Um, so they came up with this idea that there are three stores to your memory 
And really what that um, previous activity demonstrated is that you would have stored those items in your short term store. And that this, this store um, has a very, very weak memory. Okay. And so what we would look at is how items become more permanent within the long term store. Okay. So this is a a sort of weak area where information can get really lost. So you probably found that you were probably only able to um, identify and remember perhaps six or seven of those items. If you've got more, then please let me know. Um, and so that's kind of indicative of, of something that's in your short term store. So you can easily test that hypothesis perhaps by using that activity. Um, another area that's really um, important is one of the areas on social influence. I won't go through the video now, but you can look at Ash's experiment on YouTube if you wish to. Um, looking at why people behave in the way they do, what's the, um, what's the influence of others around us in determining our behavior. Um, and so a really famous experiment that we, we look at is this um, idea of Ash taking these lines, presenting them to participants and asking them to match the same line, which you could probably do straight away. Okay, so which of these three lines is the same length as this one? Um, and what he was interested in is if others said the wrong one, one would that determine what a participant chose. So if there are lots of people around you saying one thing, does that have an influence on your behavior? And so he enlisted some confederates, so people that were in on the experiment and they understood the aims of the experiment, to lie and he would observe whether or not that had an influence on the behavior of the participants. Okay, so that's another experiment that you might like to have a go at at home, so putting psychology in action. Um, and this has a you know, really, really important significance at the moment, thinking about the roles of protest. You know, when do people um, decide to do something? What's the, um, the role of the group um, in those factors? So really topical at the moment. Um, that would be of, of interest to lots of you. So... Overall, then, this is the um, specification for AQA um, in a brief, brief terms. In year 12, then, we cover these compulsory topics, so memory, which we talked about, social influence, we talked about briefly, um, attachment, so thinking about um, the role of the caregiver when um, bringing up babies, psychopathology, so thinking, looking at things like depression, OCD and phobias, thinking about what are um, abnormal behaviours. Students find that really interesting. All the different approaches in psychology. So if it's a behaviourist approach or a social learning approach. Um, and really, really important um, research methods goes throughout all of these papers. So thinking about how psychologists gather data, how they analyse that raw data, um, and, and looking at statistics and quantitative versus qualitative data. So you do need to come to the course with a good understanding of GCSE maths. Um, we'll go over that in more detail. Then by year 13, obviously, research methods again continues. Um, there are further approaches in psychology, biopsychology. So looking at the influence of the brain. Um, and issues and debates within psychology. And we um, do three optional topics. Um, these may be subject to change, obviously, um, year after year. It's really important that students understand that there are an additional um, expectation on how much you work outside the lessons. So obviously, as your teachers, we will facilitate your learning. We will provide all the necessary resources for you to be successful. But the real hardcore learning and memorizing of, of, of the content has to come from you outside of the lesson as well. Um, so we will issue lots of wider reading, summaries of the key studies and theory. We'll do some group research projects, all of which will need to take part um, 
outside of lessons. So there is this expectation that as sixth form students, you are strong, independent learners. And obviously, if you need some help developing those skills, then we will obviously provide that support. So we take a really kind of holistic approach to teaching and learning within the social science department using a wide variety of teaching and learning strategies. Um, you will get a mixture of teacher presentations with worksheets, booklets, lots of group, group research projects, lots and lots of opportunity to work collaboratively within groups or pairs. Um, the subject lends itself really well to looking at videos and documentaries. And obviously we're really keen to get out of the classroom um, and go back onto some trips. Um, again, these are the kind of things that we would expect you um, to be able to do independently outside of the classroom. So uh, we had in 2019, we had two really successful trips that we're keen to, to go back to revisit. So some conferences, um, that we went on one about science and psychology. So the, the role of dance within um, psychology, really interesting magic and hypnosis. Um, that obviously that kind of really got students interested. And then a criminology um, talk, so looking at forensics uh, that had crossovers with the crime and deviance unit in sociology as well. So just, so you're aware that you, that these are kind of the things that psychology is not. So if you're if you're thinking you're going to come in and be able to read people's minds, or that you are going to you know become some kind of forensic expert, or you're going to be able to you know have this understanding of serial killers because obviously there's a lot lot of Netflix documentaries around at the moment. Psychology is not those things. Um, it's not just a common sense approach. You can't just be a armchair psychologist, you have to use um, up-to-date research to support your, um, your views and your judgments. Um, so it's a highly academic subject where there is a lot to learn. There's, there'll be a lot of key terms. Um, like all of the social sciences, there are you know lots of researchers to remember. There are lots of key terms to remember. Um, so as long as you come into the course with a really kind of open view and an open mind, um, as one student said, it's difficult, but it's interesting. So you don't mind and it all comes together in the end. There are lots of crossovers between other subjects. So within the humanities or biology has lots of um, crossovers, obviously. And within things like history or English, again, it'll help you, help you have a more rounded view of those subjects. Um, again, this is something that we hear time and time again. I just wish I'd be more organized with my notes from the beginning. So there is a lot to keep on top of. There is a lot of organizational um, work that needs to come from you. Um, and if that's not something you're, you're good at, then that's something you're going to have to develop because those who are more successful at revision um, are able to organize themselves. So this is what we would love you to come um, to our lessons being um, an effective psychology student. So being interested. So you've chosen this subject um, because obviously you have an interest in it. So continue that that interest and that and that kind of um, curious um, look at the world around you. Make an effort and con contribute pos positively every lesson. Embrace all types of learning. So some of you might be thinking, you know, maths isn't my strong point, but there is a degree of math that is evolved. So approach those those um, lessons with the right attitude to challenge, with a positive attitude to challenge. Making sure you'll be able to manage your time and your own learning, being organized, um, you know, and communicate with us. We, we're, you know, we're very happy to hear um, how students are doing as long as they tell us and then we have awareness. So it's, it's the students who sort of like, try to disappear and don't consult us if they're struggling, that we obviously can't help in the same way. So please let us know. Um, and we're, we're very kind of, um, we're very kind of good at listening. So I will issue you with lots and lots of other information between now and September. 
Um, but there are lots of things you could be doing now in terms of reading. So here we've um, put down some um, titles, book titles that you may be interested in. Um, a favorite of mine, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat by Oliver Sacks. I really recommend reading that. That's really insightful look at like, the role of psychology. Um, there's a really good, if you have BBC Sounds, um, there's a great series called All in the Mind, which you can access um, a number of really good episodes. Um, and again, uh, lots of films that might be um, relevant. Again, just check that if they're for over 18s about the content. And one thing you could be doing as well is organizing yourself, getting yourself a folder um, and looking at the recommended text books, which you'll, you'll be um, told nearer the time. Okay, um, that kind of brings me towards the end of the presentation. Obviously, um, I'm really willing to answer any questions that you may have. Um, I think if you ha do have questions, then you're going to be a great psychology student because we need those inquisitive minds, those, those kind of never, never satisfied with one answer students. Um, so we really, really encourage questions and a questioning mind. Um, so hopefully looking forward to seeing you in September. Thank you for listening.